Hi and welcome along to AFTV Transfer Daily, the show that keeps you up to date with players that have been linked with the January transfer move to Arsenal. Only a couple of days to go now until the January transfer window slams shut, as they say. And what is going on at Arsenal? Who are we going to sign? Are we going to get anybody in? <sighs> Who knows? Who knows? Um, Unai Emery yesterday uh, been questioned a lot about the transfer window. Asked a lot of questions about sign-ins, who are we looking to bring in. Um, asked about you know how we're going to cope with the injuries that we've got. Of course, lots of injuries in that centre-back position. And um, Emery, some interesting comments. Let me go for a few of them here. Um, on the one about the defenders and us looking light in defence. I mean, remember we've got a game tonight, and uh, we're missing probably going to be missing Koscielny. Definitely missing Socrates until the, um, until the end of February. Unai Emery said, we have enough players who can play centre-back in the squad. The problem is we're having a lot of injuries in this position. We have enough players. If we can bring another player and all the other players we have are well to play, then we could have a problem in the future. So in other words, what he's saying there is basically is that if he brings a defender in and then all the other defenders that he's got gets fit, then he's going to have a problem because he's not going to be able to play the defender that he brought in or other defenders won't be able to play. <sighs> De defenders are not fit. Bellerin's out. Um, Socrates is out until the end of February. Check that out. When we say the end of February, that then when means if he comes back, that's March, April, May. Season's over. Mid-May. I'd bring somebody in. Definitely bring somebody in. Not, if you also add into the mix the fact that, you know, so many of our players are injury prone. I mean, how many games have we seen Monreal play this season? You know, loads and loads of injuries just throughout our whole back line. For me, we should 100% be strengthening in the defensive area. But Unai Emery seeming to suggest there that we're not going to do that, that we've got lots of players who can play in that position. We've been playing Granit Xhaka. As a centre-back, he'll probably play in that position tonight. He just can't do that. You know what I mean? He's just no good there. He's, you know, not the best of defensive players, even playing in midfield, let alone to push him back as a centre-back. He's got the stature to play it, but he's just not, for me, capable in that position. We need to bring in a centre-back, but manager suggesting there that that's not going to happen. Um, some other comments from the manager... He said, the club is telling me that at this moment, it's not good to buy players. But the club say to me that in the summer, it's going to be different. And we're going to have chances to take and spend money to buy players. And then he was also asked, how many players is he looking to sign in this January window? And this was the very worrying one. He said, nil or the possibility of two between nil and two. Nil if they aren't coming to help us like we want, I would prefer that they don't come. Um, will I be disappointed if there are no sign-ins? No. We know it's not easy. We were speaking about this possibility and we know it is not easy. So even suggesting there that Arsenal may make no signings, nil to two. So a maximum of two signings they're looking to make. And they've been talking about trying to make two signings literally the whole January transfer window, but also there suggesting that might make none if there's not the possibility of signing someone that's going to come in and help us. Sounds a lot what Unai Emery's saying there, like what Arsene Wenger used to say, that if we can't find the quality out there, I'm not just going to bring in any and anyone. And listen, I understand that entirely. I, I completely understand Unai Emery and previously Arsene Wenger saying that, you know, there's no point in bringing in a player that's not going to be better than what we've got or not going to be in a position to help us at this time. But when I look at Arsenal right now, we need help, especially in the defensive area. Every fan who goes to watch Arsenal week in, week out, or wherever you watch Arsenal, know, even fans who don't follow Arsenal, know that the defence is not the strongest. We need reinforcements in defence. Right, We need a centre-back or a right-back, but we need cover in that area. Everybody who watches Arsenal knows that we need width. Right, We need somebody out wide. 
Everybody who knows, watches Arsenal knows that there's no backup on the bench if it's not working with Aubameyang or Lacazette. There's no forward-thinking strike or whatever to bring off the bench and play. We've got loads of injuries. Mkhitaryan, Welbeck, Bellerin, Holding, Socrates. We're racked with injuries right now to key players. We need to go and buy players. And like I said, I understand it when managers say, well, we don't want to you know, of our club say, well, we don't want to just go and buy any and anyone. It has to be the right player. We're not just going to buy a player for the sake of it. But are you telling me that there's no player out there that Arsenal could be getting to solve these defensive problems that we've got at the moment? Are you telling me, if you look at the 10 richest clubs in Europe, or in the world, should I say, which we're in that, remember? I think we were either number six or seven. Are you telling me that Juventus, you know, if they had the crisis that we had right now in defence, wouldn't be going out to strengthen that area? Couldn't find anybody. Bayern Munich. And I know you might be saying, well, why are you going to compare us to Bayern? No, we're in the same list as them, of the richest clubs. Liverpool, do you think they do that? Do you? Manchester City, Manchester United. Do you think that they would do that, be down to their bare bones, playing jacker in defence, and would turn around and say, well, we don't think there's nobody out there. They would go out there and they would make it happen. They would identify a player at a club. They would go in and they'd get that player. That's how those clubs operate. They're aggressive in the transfer market. They will go out and they will make that happen. If we're going to be really honest with the situation this January transfer window is an absolute shambles. And I'm not even blaming Unai Emery. No blame goes on Unai Emery whatsoever for this, right? <clears throat> I, blame, I blame the owner of the board. I've been talking about it all month. You've got to blame them. I had a fan message me this morning. He said, Robbie, we're getting lied to again, right? What did we move to this new stadium for if we were in these situations where we've got no money? It's just, you know, to buy players. I'm not going to get into the full details. We know that it's been an absolute shambles um, with the whole buying and selling of players over the past few years. And hence the situation where we can only be loaning players apparently this month. But couldn't we have tried to have sold some of the players that maybe we had to try and free up some money? Or is it that they're valued at so little and are so not nobody wants them that we can't even sell them? It's a mess. It's an utter mess, and I don't blame Emery. He's had no chance. You know, he's been to Arsenal going to the, getting the team into the top four, and he's been given no help. In the summer, given an absolute pittance, a 60 million quid to, you know, try and get a squad that was sixth last year and awful in the Premier League, hardly won a game away from home, given next to nothing and said, yeah, try and get him in the top four. Given no help now this January, racked with injuries. He was on a great run when he had a full squad. Since all the injuries have come in, he's falling apart. Giving no help again. Oh, you're going to have to wait till the summer. Don't worry, Unai. In the summer, we'll have a bit of money for you. But right now, we've got nothing. But we still want you to get into the top four. Come on. Somebody needs to be coming out. This is where the owner of the club needs to come out and be honest with the fans. But is he interested? Is he thinking about Arsenal this week or is he thinking about the Super Bowl final on Sunday with the LA Rams? Come Sunday, will he be bothered about what happens at Man City if we get a pummel in with a makeshift defence? Or will he be just thinking strictly about the Super Bowl final? I leave it up to you to answer that question. I'm not even going to bother to do a poll on it because I think I know what the outcome will be. Um... Let's talk about a couple of players we are linked with today. We are linked with a right back today. Um, his name is Ke Kevin Malkia. He plays for Napoli, uh, 27. Uh, Arsenal have apparently inquired about him according to the website uh, French Football. Um, they say that Arsenal have made inquiries about him. He's only made about nine starts this season for Napoli, but has done well when he's come in. Um, there's lots of suggestions that Arsenal may be interested in trying to sign him as a cover for Hector Bellerin, but again, it would have to be a loan. And as I said, even though these links are out there and we've inquired about him, is this one for the summer? Because basically Unai Emery coming out yesterday and 
you know, it's, it's like almost like they're trying to soften the blow in case they don't sign no one by saying, oh, don't worry. In the summer, we're going to have loads of money, right? Um, but he's linked with Arsenal today. Ivan Perisic continues to be linked with Arsenal. Now, this is the, you know, again, don't get me wrong, quality player, world-class player, right? It was brilliant. I remember seeing him in the World Cup. Absolutely brilliant against England in that semi-final. What a player. Would be brilliant for Arsenal. He's handed in a transfer request. He wants to come to Arsenal, but Arsenal ain't got no money to buy him. If we had money right now, we could get this guy. If we had money right now, for around about £35 million, we could go and get Ivan Perisic, which, even though he's 29, I think is a steal. He's a world-class player. But we want to do it on a loan deal. And Inter Milan, quite rightly so, are like, you know, I'm not interested in no loans, man. Come forth with no, some cash. Could it happen? Still a possibility. If the loan deal's a big loan till the end of the season with a definite option to buy in a May break, you know, um, Perisic at the moment is not even training with a full team. They're saying that his mind's not on it. He, he's put in a transfer request. He's trying to force the move. It could be a possibility that this one could happen before deadline day and it would be a big move. Is it what we need? We do need a wide player, but we need a defender as well. But I would be happy if Perisic came in. But let's see how this one develops out. Um, Asa Mandy, I've spoken about him a couple of times from Real Betis. Um, centre-back, versatile defender, can play anywhere across the back, really. Uh, Arsenal said to be very interested in him. Again, I just can't see this one happening in January. He's got a £26 million release clause. I think this is more one that they're looking at in the summer. But he's been linked. Denis Suarez... As the days go by, starting to look less and less likely, which is really surprising at the start of the window. This one looks almost nailed on, but there definitely seems to be a big problem between Suarez and Barcelona. Suarez doesn't want to sign a long-term contract with them. He just wants the loan move to Arsenal. They've agreed terms, you know, Denis Suarez's people and Arsenal have agreed terms, but Barcelona are trying to protect their asset and wanting to sign a big contract and are not willing to let him go. Could there be a break in this one just before the transfer window? Possible. Again, possible that it could happen, but not 100%. It's a real 50-50 deal with this one. So again, we have to wait and see how um, that one develops. And lastly, I just wanted to talk about this one. Um, I was reading about this yesterday, that when Arsene Wenger left at the end of the summer, Arsenal had to pay him off him, Arsenal, Arsenal had to pay off Arsene Wenger and all the various members of the coaching staff and backroom staff that they got rid of. £17.1 million. That was the payoff. Wow. <laughs> We've been spending a lot of money all over the place, but none of it seems to be going on players. Wow. It's a big game tonight. Arsenal taking on Cardiff City. Um, and you know what? As we're talking about transfers, and obviously been doing transfer daily right throughout the whole of January. The reality is when you then think about what's happened with Emiliano Salah and you know what happened between the transfer from Nantes to Cardiff City and the disappearance of his plane and you know it's so sad. It really puts things into perspective. We're only talking about 50 million here, 100 million but somebody's lost their life and it's really really sad um and i'm sure there'll be lots of tributes um tonight at the game to cardiff city um those players it's really gonna have an effect on cardiff city's players as well it must be really difficult to play even though they didn't really get to meet him but to know what's happened as a footballer in that change room is going to be really really hard for them for us, though, we need three points. We've got to get that win. The likelihood is that going to Man City, we won't get you know anything out of that, a point at best. So we really, really have to win this game tonight against Cardiff City. And a big win would be something to really take our mind off of the shambles that's been the transfer market and also bounce back after that defeat against Manchester United. We look forward to it tonight. Listen, thanks for watching the show. We will be back tomorrow, only a couple of days to go before the January transfer window shuts.